Very nice. Yeah. You have a strangely high voice. Yes. I'm called Mr. Harmony. I can harmonize with anything. I can harmonize with an animal. I can harmonize with a gentile. Any human. I do a lot of harmony. Did you start to say a yes, gentile? Yes, I can talk Because I'm you. easily offended. No, I, I don't want to offend you, sir. <laughs> well, all right. God has heartily offended you by giving you short stature. And I am not going to contribute <laughs> to that. You know I make a joke. You're one of the best-looking short people I've ever met. <laughs> Thank you very much. And the worst yes, host I've ever met. <laughs> I'm a stubby little dream, aren't I? <laughs> you broke me up. So is yourself. Listen, <laughs> now, now that we have everyone out here, um, let, let's pin one thing down for all time, and then maybe it'll never have to come up on a talk show again. And that is, is Hollywood dying, as we constantly hear, or is it not? Gentlemen? Well, I think Mr. Capra knows more about it. I, I've never, personally, I've never made, I made two films. Uh, that makes me a director. I'm sitting here with other directors. <laughs> yeah. I made two pictures. So I really don't know anything about really making movies. Mm -hmm. Both my films were made um, outside of, you know, the Hollywood precincts. One was in New York, and the other one was, you, 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 you go, go, you go, go, slap, so slap, you go, slap, yeah, right, right. That's my home country, yeah. you know. I'm Take sorry. it easy. I'm sorry. Yes. Dobro, dobro, dobro. 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 Not only that, but John Simon, the film critic, comes Who? from there. John Simon? I don't know him. That may be his, that may be the problem. I, he's in my new movie, you know. How do you mean that? I mean that. An actor. And he's playing a part? No. 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 Uh, John Simon uh, uh, is impersonated in my new movie by an actor that uh, Mel used in, in uh, The Producers named uh, Ken, Kenneth Mars. And what did he play in The Producers? Play Oh, well, I, there's no... He played the Nazi in The Producers, <laughs> but... He, he, he was Franz Liebkin, the man with the helmet. Oh, yeah. Liebkin, love child. Franz Liebkin. Liebkin. Yes. But in, in, uh -huh. in What's Up, Doc, uh, Kenneth plays a, a fellow named Hugh Simon, who is yeah. the heavy. That's very close to John Simon, a lot Isn't of people it? will yeah. guess. Yes, yeah. Does he know? I mean, does he... Uh, I don't think he knows now, but... <laughs> does this have anything to do with his saying on the show the other night that you had a misspent youth uh, living in cinema? No, I've always thought he was a very shoddy critic and one who didn't know anything about pictures. And so... Wait, he, wait, he's going to say good now. Long, long, <laughs> wait for the so, valentine. Long time ago, he, he, uh, somebody sent me a book of his to review when I was... I used to be a critic, you know? Okay. And, and they sent me, and I reviewed it for the, that's all right. And for the, I reviewed it for the Washington Post, and I, I had never read his stuff, and they sent me this book, it came to me cold, and I read it. It was a terrible book with all kinds of terrible mistakes in it. I mean, factual mistakes. Forget about the critical uh, errors in judgment, which I didn't d deal with. It was just mm. factual errors. And I wrote this review, and, and uh, have always thought, he's always been sort of a, a pain, you know? And so, and he's Wait, so. There's no, there's no good coming. No, and he's, there is no and he's good such a, he's such a pompous poop, you know. That Look, it's getting, that, that's, that's, that's the worst, good. Folks. <laughs> that's the good. So there was the compliment you were waiting for. That, that I, I had this character in the movie, uh, this rival to Ryan O'Neill, and I thought, there's the character, you know, this kind of European, uh, 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 pseudo intellectual, you know, and I sort of thought that'd be fun to have him play that. I see. But do you like John Simon? I That's love the it. part we're trying to get. We got a little off the track. Um, oh, you asked if Hollywood we'll was We'll find dying. out if Hollywood... Let's find that out after this message. Oh. Okay, we'll be right back. <laughs> Mr. Capper, we all agreed during the break that with your list of stunning films, uh, we all like to hear you talk about whether you think Hollywood is a, is a dying business. Uh, That's been said many times before, that Hollywood has been a dying business. It's been said over and over, probably every 10 years or so, it gets, gets said. Mm -hmm. Hollywood is down at the moment, yes. Down, perhaps unemployment is there, but uh, Hollywood is never going to. But if Hollywood means anything to films, all I, all I can say is that films are not going to die, I tell you that. No, they're yeah. going to be made somewhere. If not in Hollywood, they're made someplace else. Mm -hmm. uh, films are the greatest of all art, art forms. It's the, an art form that, co that comprises all the others, uses all the others as tools. Mm -hmm. It's probably the the only art form that's the new, the only art form that's been created in the last probably five or six thousand years or so, uh, and uh, and I agree with Bob Altman when he says the the uh, good pictures are yet to be made. Mm -hmm. They are yet to be made because uh, we haven't we haven't really scratched the surface of this enormous tool that we have in our hands that uh, fill. 
So, so maybe Hollywood is dying as a geographical point, but films are not dying, and the uh, fil film art is not dying. The film art is just waiting for somebody to make some good films. That's all. Well, sometimes they say the old Hollywood is dead, and at least one, if it is, good, <clears throat> because a lot of those swine like Harry Cohn, who used to tyrannize people when he ran Columbia Studios and all, I'm sort of quoting people, uh, are no longer around, and at least that era is over. Well, I think we but miss... But he comes off very, rather appealingly in your book. I mean, you apparently knew how to deal with him, and you always hear of him as the worst rat who ever lived in Hollywood. Well, he ran his studio on a very crad, uh, crass, uh, you know, crude uh, uh, method. If he, uh, if he could bully you, he didn't want you around. But if you could stand up to him, he wanted you, and he gave you all the, all the, all the, 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 the uh, control that you wanted to do your films. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, uh, he was a very, very good thing for Hollywood, Harry Cohen. When you first met him, were you scared? Everybody's scared of Harry Cohen. Harry, he, he, he had such a reputation of being a monster, and he yeah. was. He was, uh, he was all the dirty things everybody called him. Yeah. But he was also a tremendous uh, catalyst for films. He loved films, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I just think we could use several Harry Cohens right now in, in uh, Hollywood at the moment. I think we missed the Harry You think Cohen's. there was an hmm? advantage to the Cohen in the sense that at least it was one man running the studio instead of a, a, a bunch of cooks? A great advantage. He could make, he could say, could, he could say yes or no. Once he said mm. yes, it was yes. You, 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 uh, you didn't have to bother with anybody else. But now you have to get a, uh, concessions from lawyers or agents, some from uh, financing and from banks and from oil companies, kind of oil yeah. companies and everything else. Yeah. Uh, people, non-creative people are yeah. running this Hollywood at the moment. And if they get back to uh, some creative people running Hollywood, we'll get back into the These, swim of uh, things. Uh, Cohen and, and uh, uh, Jack Warner, uh, who I never got along with, but at least, like you said, they loved films mm -hmm. and they were monarchs and they didn't pass it on. But these clowns today, you know, they're in the hotel business, they're in the, they don't, they don't uh, have the... I wonder who you're talking about. I was talking about Jim Aubrey and Doug Netter. And <laughs> <laughs> people like we that. missed some of the other names. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, that's what I always think they mean when Hollywood is dead. That you have to deal with these conglomerates, and how can a man make a film while he's waiting for a phone call to find out if the board of a sawdust <coughs> packaging yeah, company I likes the there script? Was some, there was a tradition. It was some kind of a tradition of, of uh, art and money, you know, an amount mm -hmm. of art and money. But at least there was some tradition. I mean, I. I, I, I despise uh, the, th the very thing that uh, you were talking about, what Peter was talking about, that um, McKinney parking lots are, you know, are, are making movies, and there, there really isn't any traditional Saul Urich or, well, you know, an L.B. Mayer or Jack Warner. Mm -hmm. I met Harry Cohn. I, I was brought out in 1952. I was doing the show of shows, and Freddie Comar, who produced a, a lot of wonderful pictures for Columbia, uh, brought me out and introduced me to Jerry Wald, who was running the studio at the time, a wonderful picture maker too, Jerry Wald, and uh, a writer and a very dynamic guy. And uh, I, uh, I went to a meeting. I didn't know where I was going. Uh, Jerry said, come, come on, we're, 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 Harry Cohen, the meeting. Meeting. Oh, good, I'm going to meeting. I love a meeting. Yeah. So I went down to the barber shop, and Harry Cohen was in the, was in the barber chair. Straight out, straight. He was being shaven, straight out, yeah. flat out. And uh, there were about 20 executives, studio guys, sitting around the barber shop, and I sat next to Freddie Comer and Jerry Wald, you know. And the barber moved him around like mobile artillery. <laughs> like he'd Aiming say, at people? Yeah, he'd say, Joni Taps. Wang, they'd swing him around, and Joni Taps would say, I didn't, I didn't know what. <laughs> so it didn't make money. You can't all make money. It was, uh, uh, we have a lot of black and white shoes, the things you like, Harry. And there's a lot of talk like that, see? And then he's he, on the on one of the swings, he said, who's that kid? And I, I said, I'm not here. I didn't know what this. I said, I'm not here, Mr. Cohn. I'm, I'm, here. I'm simply not here. And you know what? He said, good, and he, that's it. <laughs> I like that, boy. And yeah. one more story with him. When I was hired, uh, I, I don't know, I think Alfred Hayes had my office before me, and I, when I came in, I saw they, they took his name out, out of the door, out, and they put my name in, and it scared me. Zip yeah. zap a name, a person, I didn't want to open the door, I thought he was dead behind the door, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I got crazy, and on that same day, the lunch hour, I went down, there was like a four-story building, Columbia, on Gower, and I changed all the names. Like I took the names from the top floor. I slid them all out and I put them on the bottom. And I took the names from the bottom and I put them on the third floor and the third floor I put them on the second floor. 
And somebody, somebody caught me. And they oh. brought me up to Harry Cohn's office. He said, why did you, why, why did you do that? We don't, we don't need that. Do you know the heart attacks you caused, you know? <laughs> we hire and fire people every two minutes. I mean, you know, oh. the, I got lawyers, agents calling. Why did you, what? I said, well, I just, for a joke. I did it for a joke. He said, well, how do you like this joke? You're finished. <laughs> You're all through. And then uh, I was fired. And then Jerry Wall uh, he went up and he did a lot of pleading and said, please give him a break. He's young, he's bright, he's good, he's Jewish, he's nice, he's short. <laughs> and eventually, so back. Harry Cohn said, all right, all right, uh, uh, clip off a few hundred a week, you know, something, you know. <laughs> but he kept me there. You're a legend yourself. We have I a message, we'll be right back. I am. Yeah. <laughs>